Ryan here for Encore. This is the first in a series of episodes where I will do some commentary on my builds. This has been suggested and requested to me a couple of times via Instagram and YouTube and I think it's probably a good time to start doing this since the build season is coming up for some of you guys out there. This episode features my TRX 4M Beetle which I built sometime in March 2024. You may have seen this rig on my channel and if not I'll be putting the link to the episodes here and at the end of the video should you want to watch them. This build has received many compliments and inquiries regarding certain details of the setup which I used as a basis for this video. There are six highlights that we will look into and they are the body, chassis, gearbox, links, shocks and battery tray. I will be putting a chapter for each so you can skip some parts if you want. So let's do the body first. The body and chassis are both from DBRC Chassis Dynamics. It came as a kit that included a raw body, a 3D printed cage, side trays and frame braces, and the aluminum chassis known to many of you TRX forum builders out there as the Gila Monster. You can buy these parts as a kit or separately from Etsy. The raw body does not come pre-cut, so when I did the cutting, my main consideration was tire clearance because I already knew that the setup had to be slammed due to the heavy gearbox, which we will talk about in another chapter. Front fenders aren't wide and they're tapered towards the front for steering clearance. Rear fenders were cut halfway to allow full compression without rubbing. After cutting, I painted the raw body inside with Tamiya paint. PS5 black and PS19 camel yellow. I masked the windows and the black parts before spraying the yellow paint. After drying, I removed the masks for black parts and sprayed the black paint. The window seals and side panels have transparent stickers with black print. Then I gave it a sunroof and half doors to make the beautiful silver gearbox more visible because it's the main feature of the build. For the lights, they are SEX24 lights that I bought from Amazon. It has different light modes that let you select the style and the color of the lights, but you need to have a channel 3 on your TEX, or channel 4 in this case, because my channel 3 was used for the gearbox servo. These lights were a bit challenging to mount, and I had to make outer rings that hold the lights, and the outer rings are the ones glued to the body. The rings were made from pen marker caps that I got from my son's old coloring set. They're for toddlers, so they're bigger than the usual pen markers. This Gila Monster chassis from DBRC was named after a lizard. This chassis helps keep your rig more planted to the rocks, and that's probably why it's been given that name. It's aluminum and quite heavy, which is okay because it makes it more suitable for a heavy gearbox. This chassis has a 7.5 degree skid angle which helps shift the weight of the gearbox forward and that's a crucial factor to this build. It also gives the rear drive shaft a better angle for more breakover clearance. The chassis came with front and rear frame braces plus a tall rear brace for mounting SUV bodies. It also has side trays which I did not use since I used the cage. Please note that if you plan to use a bumper on your build, there will be no place to mount them here because this chassis is short. It's meant for more performance oriented builds rather than scale oriented builds. If you want a bumper, what you can do is securely attach them to the body like what I did for my wheelie truck build which also sits on a Gila Monster. Next, the gearbox. If you have an aluminum TRX 4M gearbox with metal gears inside, this thing weighs maybe double of that. When I took this apart to grease the components, I've noticed that the casing was thick and the gears were heavy, so that's a good thing in terms of build quality, but maybe not for the center of gravity. Aside from its weight, it's also tall, and once you've installed the shifter servo at the back, it's gonna be even longer and heavier. It's just big and heavy. So why did they want it? For fun, of course. The Beetle is a fun car and I want that kind of character to be instilled in this rig. 
adding a high gear just makes it more fun to play with. The low gear on this transmission feels very comfortable. It's 56 is to 1, so that's slower than the usual 40 is to 1 gearing. It allows more precise control for technical lines. The high gear on the other hand is 15 is to 1, which is faster than the stock Traxxas gears, and it totally rips when powered by a brushless motor. One of the challenges you'll face when setting up this gearbox is getting the right movement for the servo horn. You need a TX that allows you to set the length of travel for both directions. The gearbox comes with several spring connectors to choose from, so you'll need to calibrate the servo movement for your spring of choice. If not, you can always just lock the gears manually without a servo using this attachment that it came with. Another potential challenge here is the motor position. It's mounted higher than the usual gearbox. Now, depending on the chassis you'll use, the motor might touch the front frame brace. I had to modify the front brace a bit to make some room for that. These links are high trail length, which is around 7mm longer than the fender or bronco links. The additional length went mostly to the rear links, and in effect, that shifts more weight to the front, where you want most of the weight to be. These Endura high clearance links are thinner than most of the other links I've seen, and that was advantageous to this setup because it allowed more articulation. My other TRX 4M builds use the stainless steel rod type, which are okay. But if you angle the shocks really low, the rod ends of the front lower links tend to hit the rod ends of the front upper links, which prevents full compression. The only disadvantage to this kind of links is that you cannot extend the length like with a stainless steel rod type. But for this build, they're already as long as I want them to be, so I guess that's fine. The shocks are from Hobby Park. Now, some people might think that this is a trivial matter, but it's not. I have here a 59mm Hobby Park and a 59mm Endura. Now look at the size of this thing compared to Injora, which is basically the size of most options in the market. The reason these Hobby Park shocks are better for this setup is that it has bigger bore and thicker springs. The springs installed on both of these shocks are medium read springs, but you can see the difference of what medium means to both of them. Shocks don't behave like they should when angled too low. You get more articulation, but also less damping and weaker rebound. I needed to angle the shocks low to lower the ride height and center of gravity, but the Endura shocks just couldn't take it. It just collapses under the weight of the whole setup, even just on a flat surface. How much more when the weight shifts to one end when climbing, downhilling, or side healing? These Hobby Park shocks are better for moderate to heavy setups, but there are also limitations, like it doesn't fit the wheelie struck bed of WT Micro. I found a solution for improving the ride height and rebound of Injura in order to work for my wheelie setup, but let's discuss that in a separate video. Another limitation to these Hobby Park shocks is that it's not available in a shorter length. This custom battery tray is born out of dire necessity. With the massive gearbox in place, there simply wasn't any space left for the battery. The servo horn makes it even harder because you just can't squeeze it in there. Even a smaller 3S battery would be challenging to insert in there. So the only viable solution I had was to put it somewhere at the back. If I placed it on top of the rear frame brace, that would have added more top weight, which is the last thing that I want. So I had to place it under. To make that happen, I had to cut up this carbon fiber battery tray from Injura and fitted it with magnets. I had to file the frame brace underneath in order to fit the battery tray. To hold the weight of the battery, it needed additional magnets on top, so I made a detachable magnetic rear body mount to solve two problems at once. The rear body mount was made from the rear body mount of SEX24 deadbolt which I modified in order to mount the body and fit the magnets. Putting the battery below the frame brace gave an unexpected advantage. 
it acted as a counterweight to the heavy front and top, which made it really good at downhilling and side healing. It's my favorite breakthrough of this TRX forum build. For those of you who like weighing their crawlers, this setup is around 729 grams with the battery on. For the weight distribution, it's 57% in front and 43% at the back and 50-50 weight for the left and right sides. It's not perfect, but it's also not bad. It could have been worse if I made the wrong decisions. If you've watched the videos of this beetle, then you know what it can do, and that's what matters in the end. What we don't see here in the corner scale is the top and bottom weight. If you combine the weight of the axles, which is 150 grams, with the weight of the wheels, which is 128 grams, that's gonna be 278 grams or around 38% of the total weight. If you add the weight of the servo, tires, and 3D printed inserts, that might be around 50% of the total weight already. So 50% on sprung weight and 50% sprung weight. So I think that's it for this episode. Any thoughts about this build? What could have I done better in your opinion? What would you change if it were your own setup? Let me know in the comments and let's keep the discussion going. For the next episode, I might do this XEX24 Hilux because this had a lot of questions too. If not this one, then maybe another TRX forum build. So we'll see. Anyway, thanks for watching and keep rocking.